Hi, Year 7. Welcome to Lesson 3, then, of our Churches Unit. Um, we've been looking the past couple of lessons um, at different churches. Last lesson, we focused in on Catholic churches, if you remember correctly. So we, um, we had a real look at what the difference was, first of all, between Anglican and Catholic, um, and why we might be looking at different churches in this country. Um, and we learned that, actually, um, there are two main branches of Christianity in the UK, the first being Anglican or Church of England, and the second being Catholic. Um, despite the fact that Catholicism is the biggest um, branch of Christianity or the most populous in the world, um, we actually don't have as many here in the UK because we have the Church of England, um, which has far more members. So Anglican churches is what we're going to be looking at today. Um, churches that you will find in your local neighbourhoods and your local villages and your local towns are more likely to be um, Anglican churches than anything else. So we're going to have a quick look at the different types of Anglican church. So Anglican is a really broad name, which actually describes um, quite a few different smaller groups of Christianity. Um, so we're going to have a look at the different ones that it sort of deals with um, and we're going to then have a look inside an Anglican church and see what an Anglican church looks like and you're going to have um, quite a lot of work to do this lesson so there's going to be a bit less of me talking and a bit more of you doing things which I think might be nice to get you sort of um, get you away from the screen a little bit there if possible. Um, so the first thing that I'd like you to do then is to um, have a go at the starter and challenge questions on the screen here. Um, so name three features you might find in a Catholic church. This is trying to cast your minds back to last week as to what we were looking at. Um, and then your challenge question, who might you find on a stained glass window and why? So those stained glass windows that we looked at last week in Catholic churches, they have specific individuals, specific characters on them. Who might we see on those windows and why might that person specifically be featured on a stained glass window? So have a think about that and um, pause the video here so you can answer those questions. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, so make sure you do pause and give yourself a chance to answer those questions. So what is an Anglican church? Um, an Anglican um, church or Anglican um, an Anglican. Um, Christianity is another word which um, basically just means Church of England. So it encompasses many different denominations of Christianity, such as Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostalists, um, the Pentecostalists, sorry, those and those of different smaller denominations of Christianity are sort of all wrapped up in this idea of Anglican churches, okay? Um, but they all look slightly differently. Um, so it's quite confusing when you're talking about Anglican churches and um, we're going to find out in a minute. So a high Anglican church. So when I went to school, I went to a Church of England school, but we were attached to a high Anglican church. Um, now I grew up and went to Methodist churches myself. So I thought the church that I went to when I went to school was a totally different religion almost than what I went to on a Sunday, which was the Methodist church. Um, because the churches, the church buildings themselves are so different. However, the beliefs are basically the same and the practices are basically the same. Um, it's just that the way that things are done within the church building on a Sunday in the church ceremonies, they are slightly different. Um, so it's all about just recognising that things can be the same but different as well and that's um that's the thing about christianity is that it's so big and there are so many branches of it that it can get quite confusing so i'm going to hopefully um try and make that make sense without confusing you too much this lesson but i feel like i'm already starting to confuse you so i'm going to stop rambling and we are gonna and <laughs> we're gonna move on to the next slide okay so some of you may have been to churches that look a little bit like this so these are quite similar when you see them from the outside and even from the inside they're not that dissimilar to our catholic churches that we were looking at last week so they're quite um grand and they're quite traditional you might have a stained glass window or two in here as well um they tend to have very high ceilings be made of stone be quite um sort of regal looking if you think um that's the right word you know they they tend to be um yeah just a lot more traditional and um i would go as far as to say they're quite fancy actually and you know what i know that's not a very technical term but they are they are fancy um compared to some of the churches we're going to look at in a minute okay so um they're the sort that you'd see on tv 
Um, if you've ever seen any footage of like a royal member of the royal family getting married, they get married in high Anglican churches. If they die, they get buried um, and have funerals in high Anglican churches. So they are sort of the churches of the royal family, but they're also a lot of people will go to high Anglican churches, but you don't see them as um, sort of often as you would see maybe other types of Anglican churches. So this, this is just one type um, that we, we do see here in the UK. And this is the type that I, when I went to school, this is the sort of church that I went to when I was at school. Um, and I, I remember thinking it was very proper and very sort of formal church to go to because um, I was raised and went to a church like this. Um, so a Methodist church, um, they, uh, they tend to be in more sort of modern buildings. I say tend to because it isn't always the case. Um, but Methodist, um, Methodist churches tend to be more modern um, and they also tend to be less formal. So what I mean by less formal is they, um, they're sort of, everybody might sit on the same level. So if you look at this one um, here on the bottom, that picture is from Sully Hall, which is a place in Birmingham. Um, it's from a Methodist church there. As you can see, there are screens up. So they're very modern. They've got screens there for everybody to be able to see. Um, people are sat on the same level. So they're, they're not sort of like a big, um, big. So if you if you look here at the front you can't really see my photos i'm not very good there's a big altar at the front of this one um there is an altar at the front of this um methodist church but it's more of just like a, a platform i would say um where there's sort of um somewhere like a lectern for the priest to stand and to give the service um but it's not you can see the, the there's a lot of differences in between these that and that if you see what i mean um and the the main thing i think is um, Methodist churches are more modern. They tend to be brighter. Um, they tend to have um, very, very rarely have stained glass window in Methodist church. Um, they tend to have, if you go to them nowadays, um, screens up. So they'll have screens up. They'll also have um, less traditional hymns sometimes in their services. So you're not going to find a modern day hymn usually in a high Anglican church. But in um, in modern Methodist church, you might find that they're singing very modern hymns. You might find that they've got a live band there. Um, so they can be very, very different, but ultimately they believe and practice the same things. It just depends on what you want to do when you get together in worship. So the worshipping part of being a Christian, um, the most important thing is really that you get together and that you do worship. How you go about doing that is different for every Christian. It's different for every church. Some churches you go to and, you know, there's no singing at all. They, they're just really not into hymns. They're really not into singing. It's more about um preaching and talking um, some churches when you go there they will have um, people standing up and praying um, at random times that you know it's a lot less rigid um, every church and every service is different so I think it's worth remembering that when we're looking at churches there is no one size fits all there's a general theme that the inside of churches tend to have but um, but by and large every church and every congregation is different OK, so um, I told you I wasn't going to be doing very much talking and I, I really do mean it. This is not going to be a very long video. However, I think for the majority of the lesson, what I want you to be focusing on is this task here. So hopefully you've done the starter questions. You've already got something written down. Um, I want you to make sure that you can access this. So if you can't access your worksheet and PDF file, I need you to let your teacher know as soon as possible because this is the bulk of the lesson. So if you can't do this, then we need to find you something else to do. OK, so um, in the description to this YouTube video, um, I have put if you're watching this on YouTube, that is I have put links to the PDF file church features and the worksheet, which looks like this. OK, on this slide and the, the worksheet is called church worksheet. Um, and what you need to do really is use the information on the church features sheet to fill in the worksheet. So one of the worksheets, that, one of the sheets that you've got, this church features one, is um, is what it sounds like. It's literally full of church features. And I would usually get you to do this in a pair if we were in the lesson. Unfortunately, we can't because um, we are working from home. But I would encourage you to use the chat bar. Talk to your friends in the chat bar. Maybe ask your friend, maybe say to somebody, OK, I'm, I've got the information for Alter, but I want to condense it down a little bit. I don't want to write all of that information into that box. How has anybody managed to write, write it into one sentence? Then somebody might be able to help you with that. OK, so really the, the task here is really taking the information from one sheet, condensing it down. So 
trying to find a way of writing it in one sentence to fit into that box. OK, so it's that that idea of um, condensing or taking notes from something. OK, and that is a skill in itself to practice. So by the end of the lesson, you should all have that sheet filled in with the correct um, with the correct stuff on there. Um, also, I have put in the description, if you're watching this on YouTube, two other videos. So the two other videos, there's one video that um, shows you around a High Anglican church, and there's another video that shows you around a Methodist church. And if you do have the time in this lesson, I would really encourage you to click on those links and have a look at what, like, you know, what it's like to actually go into one of these churches. There's only so much I can really tell you, um, you know, and explain to you from pictures and just being able to talk to you about it um the ideal situation really is a school trip and to be able to go and look physically look around these churches um that's not going to happen anytime soon because of the pandemic so the next best thing i think is um a video that's going to show you around okay by somebody who knows what they're talking about um so i would encourage you once you've done this worksheet to go onto the description bar and to have a click and have a look at those again if you can't find him um those links if you can't find anything that i'm referring to in this um video please get in touch with your teacher and let them know that you're not sure where to find things okay for my classes all of this is going to be available in our class materials folder okay for other people's classes if it's mrs roberts commons or mrs brown and um, they may well have emailed you these sheets okay so check your emails and see if you've got them but you need two sheets for this task you need the church features PDF file and you need the church worksheet, which is a word file, word document to work on. OK, if you do not have the ability to work on word. Um, so if you can see that worksheet, but you can't work on it because you're not on a computer or a laptop, what I would suggest is um, because it's quite a simple diagram, get a pen um, or a pencil and get a piece of paper write um, or draw that cross that you can see there on the slide um, and just try and do it manually because it's actually not a very complicated thing you don't need to be an artist to be able to draw that and um, so it might take you a little bit longer but it means you can still do the task okay so there's some various different ways of being able to do that so i would pause the video here and um, go on off this video so you can open up the things that you need and when you are ready to come back to the lesson just come back onto the video and click play and i will explain the last task that you need to do today OK, so hopefully you've all gone away and done that task. Um, I really hope that if you did get stuck in any way that you talk to your friends or you talk to your teacher and let them know and let somebody sort of help you with that. Um, modern churches then. So we have not looked yet at modern churches and maybe that's what we might do next week. I've not decided yet. We might look at modern churches next week. Um, so what features do you think could be added to the church to make it more modern? So we saw, let me scroll back in the Methodist church there, look, we saw They've got screens up. Now, those screens are really helpful if people have um, problems with their vision, problems with their hearing. Um, having things there on a screen in big writing can help people who are struggling um, with one of those two things. Um, it also is um, a really great way of everybody being able to see things like lyrics to hymns if it's a new hymn and they don't have it in hymn book um, and it's also a nice way of sharing sort of pictures and news with the congregation maybe they had a, a fundraising event and they wanted to share something from it having those screens there makes it really easy to do that so it makes it sort of more interactive for people and um, so that's one way in which churches um, over the last sort of decade or two have sort of modernized a little bit but what other features do you think could be added to the church to make it more modern it's worth considering that your age group um, are it's it's very small minority of people in your age group that actually attend church. So think about yourselves and think about what you would like to see in the church in order to make you want to go there. OK, um, so that is your final task for today. So I'm going to stop there, but obviously you're going to need to pause the video in order to um, keep it on this slide so that you can see what you're doing. Um, I look forward to seeing this. So I want you to draw the feature if you can. If you can't or you think that that's really difficult, you, you know, you, you really aren't good at drawing as long as you do those um, what's being asked of you there. So as long as you describe why you've chosen the feature and explain why it would make that church more modern um, and then compare views on whether your feature would be a good addition to a church. So by that, what I'm asking you to do is 
think, okay, well, this is what you think would make it um, a, would make a good addition. But why might somebody disagree with you? Might, why might somebody think, oh, no, that's rubbish. That's really not going to be a good addition to a church because X, Y, Z. That's how you get your level four here. You need to be looking at the alternative point of view. OK, so why might somebody not agree and think that your idea is a very good idea? OK, I hope that makes sense. Please get in touch with me or your teacher if it doesn't and um, we can clarify further for you. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson and um, and you've been able to be interactive with your friends and your um, teachers throughout. And next lesson, I think I have decided we are going to look at modern churches next lesson because I think that's going to be really interesting to look at how um, some of the super churches or mega churches um, are, are really changing what a church looks like. Um, for the next generation okay so fantastic thank you for all your hard work this lesson guys and i will see you next week with another fantastic lesson on churches